Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today's going to be a little bit of a talking head video because AMD have just done an announcement for an announcement of an announcement that they're going to be announcing. Let's do this. So it seems like AMD have actually done, as I mentioned at the start of this video, a bit of an announcement that they're going to be announcing something which was actually an announcement which is going to come later for announcing an actual product. So it all seems very, very confusing, but we all kind of expected it to happen, especially with everything that's been going on with Nvidia and the RTX 3000 series. But what this basically means is that we have big Navi coming or the RTX 6000 series. So is it gonna sort of, you know, become everything that we kind of want, or is it gonna be very much like the Radeon 7 and it's just gonna be an absolute flop? Well, there's really only one way to sort of think about it. We have to really look at I guess what we know already, what's actually going to be rumoured and really what could be, what should be and take it from there. I mean, we don't actually have a fully fledged name for it yet, but we can only assume that the flagship model based on previous naming structure is going to be the 6900 XT, which sounds pretty fitting. It's going to be the next evolutionary step up from the 5700 XT with kind of, you know, that little bit extra performance. So what did AMD really sort of tell us from this? announcement. Uh, well, basically they told us two dates. The first one is going to be the 10th of October, which is actually for Zen 3, which is a little bit weird because I kind of feel like AMD don't really need it. They're kind of competing a little bit with themselves, very similar to, I guess, what we're seeing from Nvidia with the RTX 3000 series competing against themselves with the RTX 2000 series. The other date that we were actually shown is the 28th of October, which is for RDNA 2, Big Navi, 6000 series, AMD's next generation GP, whatever you want to call it, that is the date that is kind of instilled in our minds. Now, does that actually mean that the products are going to be available then? Probably not. It's probably going to be an announcement from Lisa Sue telling us that these products are going to be available in a couple of weeks or in a month's time or something like that. I'm probably pegging my sort of guess really on mid to late November so that they can hit everything for maybe even Black Friday and then obviously the Christmas market, we can maybe see some sort of, you know, competition firing up a little bit there. So what were we actually told about RDNA 2? What do we actually know about it so far? Well, of course we do know that there is gonna be kind of claims from AMD that there's gonna be a performance per watt improvement. There's also going to be things like ray tracing. It's about time AMD. And we are gonna see things like variable shaders and a lot more, but it all seems very coy. No, not that type, but I'm sure you know kind of what I'm getting at here. So what about the specs? Well, straight away, we know that it's gonna be seven nanometer. That is nothing new. When AMD announced that RDNA 2 was going to be coming sort of earlier on, they did mention that it's going to essentially stay on the same kind of uh, process node as the original RDNA architecture. So this is very similar to what we saw on the desktop uh, processor market with AMD with the move from Zen to Zen 2. So what's that really gonna give us above and beyond what we already have? Well, one thing we do need to look at is the mistakes that AMD have made and potentially what mistakes they're going to make uh, in this new one, as well as what they're actually gonna learn from. So one of these things is gonna come down to the memory. So this time we're not actually gonna be getting HBM memory. It's really exciting this time because AMD kind of, well, they, they screwed it up last time. The Radeon 7 did have HBM2 memory. It had 16 gigabit. The problem was it was so fast and so expensive that firstly, it was out of the majority of people's reach because of the cost. And secondly, because it was so fast, the GPU core, well, it frankly couldn't keep up. We also know from sort of the memory side of things that extra memory doesn't necessarily mean extra performance. Yes, in 4K, it's definitely going to be uh, sort of coming in handy, but it doesn't really mean that, yes, chucking loads of memory at something is definitely going to help me in gaming performance. I mean, that's a different kettle of fish altogether. What is it with fish today? So what about the specs that we do know? Well, we don't really know anything. All we do know is that there's potentially going to be around 5,120 shader units in the flagship let's call it 6900 XT. It's also gonna be about 80 compute units and it is gonna utilize PCI Express 4.0, very much like we saw on the 5000 series graphics cards and what Nvidia are announcing on the RTX 3000 series. But if, N if what we actually know from Nvidia is anything to go by, apparently there's not actually that much of an improvement from PCIe Gen 3 to PCIe Gen 4. So that's not really a deal breaker. So what about pricing? Well, there's been a lot of stuff sort of touting around the 
let's say the $599 mark, but you probably saw it the other day, rumors that AMD have already slashed the pricing and we're probably more likely to see it at around the $549 mark. Why have they done this? Well, Nvidia, that's pretty much the only reason. Nvidia came out with the pricing for the 3070, 3080 and 3090, and well, AMD basically got bitch slapped into reducing the price of their graphics cards before they'd even launched. I mean, that's a pretty bold move. Let's see if it pays off. So what about comparisons to Nvidia? I mean, this is, I guess, the in the grand scheme of things, the big thing. Can AMD compete with Nvidia? Are they gonna have a product that can really sort of, you know, make them accountable for what they're releasing? There's only really gonna be one winner, and I say this all the time, and it is gonna be the consumer because we're gonna end up with a lot of choice. I mean, when Nvidia unveiled the 3000 series, they did talk a lot about 4K. I mean, in some instances with the 3090, they're even talking about 8K. So is 4K gaming really the new next big thing? Well, according to the latest Steam survey from August this year, well, frankly, no. 1080p is still very much dominating when you look at a 65.55% uh, sort of market share of just people running at 1080p resolution. As I did mention, if you have got that extra bandwidth and you have got that extra memory, yes, that's gonna come into play when it comes to the likes of 4K, especially if you're looking at playing games at 4K and trying to get over that glorious 60 FPS number and even above and beyond that. Although saying that, we do have to look at the 20 series from Nvidia. So the 2080 Ti was meant to be a 4K gaming monster and that only had 11 gig of memory. The 3070, is that for 4K? Because that's only got eight gig of memory and this is GDR6 as well, not GDR6X like we're gonna see in the 3090. So I'm a little bit confused that, is this trying to segment the 3070 away from 4K? Is this maybe where with the extra memory, AMD can kind of come in, swoop up some of the market for, maybe people who wanna play 4K, they're not too bothered about getting massively high frame rates, but they still wanna be able to play at 4K and Nvidia don't really have anything within their price limit. Maybe that's kind of where AMD are gonna slowly kind of slot in between the 3070 and the 3080. If the price is anything to go by and the performance, based on specs and things like that is anything to go by, it seems like the logical choice is to literally sit itself right between those two cards. So what about the improvements? I mean, what are we gonna expect? This is what I love about AMD. They're like a fine wine. They kind of mature or like a cheese without the smell. They've basically taken on the desktop processor market, Zen to Zen 2, and you can see the way that it's matured. The IPC uplift, the performance uh, you know, against the wattage, it's all very, very interesting, but can they do the same on the graphics card side of things? I mean, I'm really hoping that that's gonna happen. Hopefully they can increase the clock speed, they can increase uh, sort of, you know, the IPC and basically just have a well-rounded product that kind of works on the mistakes from past and sort of just makes them a little bit better. And it doesn't even need to be better than the competition. It just kind of really needs to be something, anything. And if we look at sort of the information that AMD has already brought out and look at what they're actually claiming from RDNA to RDNA 2, it's very much similar to what we actually saw from Zen and Zen 2. So if they can do exactly the same thing, I mean, are they gonna sort of, I don't know, come in through the back door and surprise everyone? Is it gonna utilize less power by doing so as well? Which is, you know, especially with all the news of this new 12 pin power connector from Nvidia, albeit on the kind of higher end, is it gonna be something that AMD can sort of say, look, you don't need a new power supply, you don't need these new connectors, you don't need this, you don't need that. We've got something that is basically more efficient. So what about the market? I mean, I already mentioned 4K gaming is still very, very niche. 8K gaming even more so. It's all about 1080p. And I think that's pretty much where AMD are actually trying to market things. I mean, look at the desktop processor market. The Ryzen 5 3600 is probably the best selling AMD processor out there. It's mainstream, it's affordable, you get a lot of bang for your buck. In terms of the value for money prospect, it's definitely the best one out there. So can they do the same on the graphics side of things? I mean, yes, we all wanna drive around in a Bugatti Veyron, but well, we're all kind of confined to owning Volkswagens, right? I mean, let's take a look at the claims. So Nvidia are claiming the RTX 3070 is better or as good or whatever they wanna say than the 2080 Ti. But is that just in ray tracing based titles? You gotta remember, there's not that many titles out there. Yes, we've got some new ones coming out with Cyberpunk and uh, Fortnite RTX. Still don't understand that one. But are AMD gonna kind of maybe focus on the rasterization side of things and just co go in with kind of, you know, raw performance with a little bit of ray tracing kind of sprinkled on at the side if you want that but maybe they're gonna beat Nvidia 
at raw performance in non-ray tracing titles? I mean, could AMD really do that? So what about the other claims? So AMD are claiming a 50% kind of improvement over the last generation. I mean, they did that once before. They've also done it on the desktop processor market. So if they've kind of done it before and we know what they can do, are we led to believe that it could happen again? I mean, what's a 50% improvement on the 5700 XT up to the 6900 XT? That's pretty bold claims in the grand scheme of things. I mean, one thing we do know is with AMD, they could literally come out with a potato tomorrow. AMD fanboys will still buy it. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That means that they do have kind of that touch with the community and people will trust anything they do. I'm hoping that, yeah, things are going to get a lot, lot better for Team Red because that's going to, in a way, invigorate Team Green as well and make them sort of strive to do something without being complacent. Kind of similar to what we saw between AMD and Intel on, again, the desktop processor market. There's so many things that we have to look at in that segment of the market and sort of think, if they did it here, why can't they do it there? So what about any potential issues that could come up? Well, I did mention earlier that I believe AMD are competing more at the mid-range market. I mean, that's where the money's at. That's where the majority of people are buying the products. If they wanted to try and compete on the high end, frankly, I don't think they could do it. And I mean, the only way they could do it is really coming out with, I don't know, some kind of killer machine or killer graphics card that in my eyes would have to be a dual GPU monster, which is gonna come with its own problems. It's gonna run hot, it's gonna require lots and lots of power. And frankly, I think the community would completely laugh it down. And while we'd end up with a very short kind of shelf life, very similar to again, the Radeon 7. So what about other areas of the market? I mean, gaming is big business, but what about the other side of things? Especially when you have the RTX 3090 coming out, that's not really a gaming card. Come on, let's be honest it's a Titan replacement. It's aimed at productivity. It's aimed at people like me. I'm recording all of this on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K camera. Yes, I'm downsampling it for YouTube into 4K because they don't support 6K, but it gives me that fine level of detail. But it takes a very kind of beastie machine to really sort of render it, scrub it, and everything else. But I don't think AMD are really focused on that market. I mean, there's so many different pieces of software out there, and nine times out of 10, just like what we use, DaVinci Resolve, it utilizes CUDA processing. So yeah, is there really anything for AMD there? Back in the day, it used to all be about OpenCL and OpenGL. So they kind of had the processor side of it, the GPU side of it, working harmoniously together. But I mean, software these days is all about CUDA processing. Yes, there are some out there that still utilize some of kind of the standards that AMD can really shine through, but the majority, no, it's all about team group. I mean, the other side of that that really we have to look at is, well, look again, and I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself at what they did on the desktop market. That kind of happened by accident. They were actually really good at rendering, really good at editing because they had a decent amount of cores, a really good clock speed. They wasn't chasing the five gigahertz mark like Intel were, but keeping the core clock, uh, keeping the amount of cores actually lower. They wasn't doing the complete opposite and just throwing lots of cores at it and really sort of no speed. They kind of got the balance just right. And then especially with the way that it talks to the memory, which I'm hoping hoping they can do this right this time, Radeon 7 again. If they can do all of that, then really, maybe, just maybe, even on the productivity side of things, AMD might actually have a product that can compete. So what are my final thoughts on this? Well, obviously we have the announcement coming up. Until then, there's gonna be rumors coming out. We're gonna be expecting that. But I think, you know, we can't take anything concrete until then. Does this mean that you shouldn't buy an NVIDIA RTX 3000 series card? I honestly believe that there may even be stock shortages at the time of launch. And that's not because NVIDIA have low amounts of stock. It's because there's gonna be so many people, and I think even more than what NVIDIA are kind of anticipating, wanting to buy these cards. They're gonna go out, they're gonna try and buy them and they're either not going to be in stock or their orders are going to be cancelled and so forth. So maybe that's actually a good opportunity for early adopters to get the card. Great. It's going to be a fantastic product, I'm sure. But for the other people out there, maybe it's an opportunity for them to wait and actually see what Team Red are going to have because they might actually have a product that is better suited for you. I'm not saying better. I'm saying better suited for you. It doesn't have to be better. It doesn't even need to be cheaper. It just needs to, at this point, be something and that's where I really think it comes down to if they can get it better or the same performance for cheaper then obviously it's going to be well even better the other thing that AMD really do have going for them is their drivers we all know that AMD drivers well they've again matured like a fine wine or a moldy cheese without the smell again but we know that the AMD drivers are fantastic now they used to be terrible now it seems like and the way that the community kind of react to it is that the NVIDIA drivers 
aren't great in comparison to AMD. I've never really had a problem with them, but I know a lot of people out there who have. So as I mentioned earlier, it at least to me seems like, yes, we're gonna have this new graphics card. Yes, it's going to have ray tracing. What elements of ray tracing? We don't know. Is it gonna be the full fat ray tracing or is it just gonna be this part of it or that part of it? Or is it really gonna be, you know, the whole hog? And if it is, is it gonna compete with Nvidia? Probably not. Nvidia's had ray tracing for the last couple of years. Turing came out, what, September 20th, 2018. It's been around, it has matured. So AMD, I don't think are gonna compete there. On the rasterization thing, yes, maybe they can. And maybe this is gonna be their kind of, you know, secret weapon, the kind of ace up their sleeve, so to speak. It's really, really gonna be interesting. And I say this time and time again, there's only really gonna be one winner and it's us as consumers. And I love the fact that, yeah, it's taking this monopoly away from a big company like AMD did to, to Intel. But, and this is a very, very big but, we have seen rumors in regards to TIs from Nvidia or super cards from Nvidia. So what's to say that AMD don't come out with this and they go, here it is, it's amazing, everyone goes crazy about it. And then Nvidia just kind of go, ah, sorry, here's a TI, or here's a super. Maybe Nvidia are kind of calling AMD's bluff. It's gonna be a very, very interesting October, I can tell you that much. And that's saying a lot because October in this industry is generally a pretty boring month. So yeah, what's gonna be on your Christmas list? Let me know in the comments section below. Is it gonna be the Nvidia side of things, 3070, 3080, 39, or even maybe a 3060 or a TI or a Super? What do you think is gonna be coming out? Or do you think that AMD are actually going to pull this off very much like they have done on the desktop processor market? I'm excited. Really, really, truly excited. We're the winners. Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.